I love thinking about God as the great creator. They do hope that by painting in an abstract way, I can bring a freshness to how people view various religious experiences. I am Paige Anderson. I am an artist living and working in Utah. I don't really remember a time where I wasn't painting and making things. I was around creativity all the time. My grandfather was a theater professor and would you know, work on sets. My grandfather on the other side had a beautiful art collection that I grew up looking at and studying. And it just felt like something that grew up with me, this desire to also be a creator. Quilting has been a major influence in my work for a long, long time. Um, when I was at BYU, I was trying to find a visual language to describe the themes I was working through at the time, which was kind of inheritance and succession and themes that were connected to ancestry and genealogy work. My grandma's a quilter, and so I was visiting her one day and thinking about you know, this, she was making a quilt for, for someone, and I was like, man, quilts are inherited, and patterns are, families are patterns, and it just kind of wove together really beautifully, so I borrowed some of her quilting books and, and thought, that's all that patterns are, right? Mom, dad, kid, mom, dad, kid. Before I left BYU, I had my first baby, and then I was in the early, like, motherhood days that are just so monotonous, and having a really hard time kind of finding meaning in all of the monotony, I still was just drawn to the patterns around me, to the rows of windows or the cobblestones or, or laundry hanging on a line. And I kind of investigated why is that? Like, what is it about repetition that is so powerful to me? And thinking also about those repetitions in my daily life of like, I was cloth diapering at the time. I was, you know, feeding and there was just so much of these repetitious um, actions that I'm like, this is actually what all of life is about. It's just all these repeated acts and these little practices that we engage in that, that form a life. And so I'm like, gosh, I guess the patterns still really work for this and quilting still really works for this. So I kept doing that. And then the things I kept kind of thinking about were, um, you know, prayer or discipleship or these other kind of more broad engagements that we, we enter into as humans or as especially people who are engaged in religious life. You know, again, it's just repeated patterns of, of engagement, you know, it's, it's repeated acts. And so I'm still just loving, loving working in this way and it just still feels like a very um, accessible way for me to engage with themes that feel a little more esoteric sometimes to approach like prayer or like how do you engage with the atonement? It's like, well, I don't know how to draw that, right? But I know what the experience feels like and the experience feels tedious and it feels like it's repeated and it feels like over and over and over. So this work um, came out of a desire that I had to really contextualize my work in a religious context. I had a piece acquired by the church in one of their international shows. Meditations on belief was the theme of the show. And I went into it really, like I wanna really meditate on my beliefs and make a work that feels like it's born out of that experience. And so for me, I made this this painting that felt so religious to me. It was like, you know, it was like heart and soul religious. And people's reaction sometimes was like, I wonder why this isn't a church show. It's just a bunch of squares. You know, I was like, what? <laughs> this is prayer, don't you see? And so I wanted to do a show that was like, I'm gonna get these big gold frames that are like, you can't miss these like kind of art historical, you know, in all my art history classes where you go to the museums, you can look at these old pieces from churches and things and they're just, in these big gold frames, you know, so I knew I wanted to do that to kind of help situate it. And then um, also the shape of the piece that I made was in reference to these altar pieces or these kind of different religious pieces that I had seen. The summer before, or maybe the fall before I started making this, I was in Poland. And something really striking to me was that I saw more religious artwork in museums than in churches. And I was like, it is so odd. Like you go to museums to experience religious artwork. Um, but in that same way, I'm like, that's where I have more religious experiences with artwork because the artwork in my church buildings is so familiar that I don't even look at it anymore. And so those two things um, are kind of the driving force behind this show that I was like, we need different depictions of familiar religious themes that that kind of bring a freshness to the experience of viewing of, or of accessing the divine through art in the LDS context, I think specifically. And I wanted to make something that centralized my work in that conversation. And as I was looking at all of her pieces, you know, they usually centralize the crucifixion as the center panel. And I thought, well, if it's an LDS altarpiece, 
wouldn't the resurrection be there? And, and we still want to you know, honor those other parts of the atonement story, but it felt like the resurrection was where I wanted to kind of centralize my, um, my painting. I made it in three panels and I thought, okay, I'm gonna have a Gethsemane panel on the left and a resurrection in the center and then a crucifixion on the, on the right-hand side. And I used really small shapes. Um, sometimes I work with a little bit of a larger scale, but for this one I wanted one to do the circle and the square because it has a lot of symbolic resonances. And I wanted it to be an exploration of the individual experience with Jesus Christ and how that is a very step-by-step, -step, small, personal, intimate experience. I start by giving my kids the panels and I say, I'm gonna buy myself some time, have the paints, have fun, and I'm gonna kinda of work on something else. So they started kind of laying down some, some colors and some textures that then become fun and also a challenge as I'm sanding through. Then I, I kind of laid out the main composition of kind of how I wanted to, to, to look, and then I start drawing in the pattern, and then I paint the whole pattern in two or three layers. So I let one shape dry and then I paint another color on top and then I do that for the whole piece. That like initial laying in the pattern feels the most tedious to me. And then I take a power sander and I sand the whole thing down. And as I do that, there's always these surprising moments of color or texture coming through and like fun relationships and juxtapositions. And, and that is like kind of what is the exciting part for me of then going back into that and saying, I love how this is working. This is not so great. And then like this kind of reveal and covering up and and that process and I just do that same thing where I'll paint and sand and paint and sand until the composition kind of comes how I want. When I found out the Mo was able to acquire this work I was totally floored. On a very kind of logistical level I was so relieved I didn't have to move it anymore. It's so big as soon as the framer dropped it off I was like it looks awesome and also what do I do with this when this show comes down? And so for a while it lived in my garage. We had to take ceiling panels out of my garage and put it up through because it's too tall to stand up in my little 60s, 1960s Rambler. My parents' house wasn't tall enough. It like, was actually a logistical problem. And so I just for years was like, I just made a big problem for myself. So you solved a huge problem. I grew up coming here and seeing like my, my art heroes kind of live here. And so t for me to be able to kind of enter into that pantheon in a small way felt so humbling and so amazing. To know that it's connected with people in a way that has made the museum even interested in it was, was a huge um, honor for me. I didn't know as an art student that this is kind of where I wanted to situate myself in the art world, but it has become important to me as an abstract artist to make a space for abstract art in the LDS art world specifically because I have found so much meaning in creating it and I've seen people connect with it that I, I feel like there is a work to do here. To, you know, I think it's another way, just like how different forms of music or different forms of worship are various conduits to the, to the divine, I think that different um, art forms provide different conduits to those um, insights. My life is bound up in, in my beliefs and I feel like it's just kind of an outgrowth of, of my experience, which is a religious one or situated in a religious context. To paint 20,000 triangles is in a way cathartic because I'm like, well, this, I'm doing this in other areas of my life and the catharsis comes when I get to see the resolution and I get to do this in mini form over and over again with the hope, it's like a faithful expression that that will also happen in my religious endeavors. That over the long haul, like prayers are answered and things are made whole. And, and I guess that for me, it's like reaffirming to myself that I believe this. For me, creating the work is, a, is very contemplative. It's very meditative and I'm able to reflect on my own experiences. I hope that that time and that tedium in the creative process is borne out in the experience that people have as they view it. Um, I hope that it gives them kind of a, a place to enter into and think about familiar themes in a fresh way. I hope that what I can provide is just a place for them to come and say, what is my experience with the Savior like? What is my experience with prayer like? What do I really believe about the resurrection? And as I sit with something and they let their eyes wander and they let their mind play, I hope that it can just be an experiential viewing. Sometimes when I see a depiction of something that I have an experience with, 
I look for the differences in how my experience does or does not resonate with what is depicted. Abstract art zooms out far enough that you have to bring yourself more into the work. Um, I try to make my abstract art a little more accessible through titles, um, through familiar motifs like quilting, I think especially. It's been interesting for me to see they, do, they can kind of strike viewers as being a little bit modern. And then also you have this kind of demographic of older women who are still engaged in quilting and, and kind of this domestic art that's maybe more lost. But I love that it brings all of these people together because they have an access point. Because there is like, oh, I know what quilting is like. It's really tedious and it is a stitch by stitch effort and and you're up close looking at the details but then you get to back away and look at this thing. I think that my art provides an access point for people because it has familiar enough imagery that it's not so what is this when people encounter it and there's also titles that give you a clue about what I was thinking about as I was making it and hopefully the marriage of those two things can bear some fruits in the viewer's mind. I also think that abstract art is it's kind of another testament to God's love of beauty and variety. There is so much variety around us and God created all of it and he loves all of it. And so there has to be an honoring of all of these creative forms. And, and I think that abstraction is just another way of God saying, yeah, I love you. Like there's a lot of ways that you can access me. You can see me in all of these different ways. And so I hope that as we kind of broaden the tent of LDS art, more people can kind of access his love for them through the visual themes that they encounter there.